And I'm sorry to say that prosperity has gone a little crazy. And I'm correcting my own uh, 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 theology. And you need to all know it. Because when I read the Bible now, I don't see the Bible in the same eyes I saw the Bible 20 years ago. Benny Hinn, a leading proponent of the prosperity gospel for the past 40 years, recently made headlines when he said he was correcting his theology about the prosperity gospel. That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. But before I do, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell if you're new so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I try to upload new videos every Thursday and do Q&A live streams every Sunday. Apparently, Benny Hinn has had some doubts about the prosperity gospel for the past couple of years. And when his friend Steve Strang, who is the founder and CEO of Charisma Magazine, asked Benny if he was ready to go public with his convictions, Benny said he was not ready yet. So Steve Strang was in, in my wedding. We go way back. And he's already asked me, said, are you ready to make it public? I said, well, not totally. Because I don't want to hurt my friends whom I love, who believe things I don't believe anymore. His friends may include popular prosperity gospel preachers from the Word of Faith movement like Joel Osteen, Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, T.D. Jakes, and Joseph Prince. They're probably not going to be too happy about Benny Hinn's denunciation of the prosperity gospel since it may affect their own ministries and lead to more criticism for them. I wouldn't be surprised if they distanced themselves from Benny Hinn now. But who knows, maybe Benny Hinn's example will lead them to denounce the prosperity gospel too. One teaching of the prosperity gospel called Seed Money claims that if you make a donation to one of these ministries for a certain amount of money, then you will receive a blessing. This of course is completely unbiblical and most people see it for what it is, a scam and an attempt to sell God's blessings. Here's a shameful example of televangelist Robert Tilton trying to convince people they need to do this and if they don't, they and their families will suffer. You're missing it and your family is suffering by it. That's a word. As surely as I'm speaking by the Spirit of God, that is a word for a person right now. That is God penetrating your heart. It's burning on the inside of you, and you need to make a vow of faith of a thousand dollars. Oh, Bob, couldn't you say 25? No! Now, Benny Hinn, he did the same thing, so he's guilty of this too. But in his sermon, he said he now sees this as an offense to the Lord, and he's done with it. I think it's an offense to the Lord. It's an offense to say, give a thousand dollars. I think it's offense to the Holy Spirit to place a price on the gospel. I'm done with it. I will never again ask you to give a thousand or whatever amounts because I think the Holy Ghost is just fed up with it. Are you, did you hear me? I think that hurts the gospel. So I'm making this statement for the first time in my life. And frankly, I don't care what people think about me anymore. I never thought the day would come when I would say I couldn't agree more with Benny Hinn. It definitely does hurt the gospel. You can't bribe God. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17 says, For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe. Benny Hinn went on to talk about motivation behind giving. If you are not giving because you love Jesus, don't bother giving. I think giving has become such a gimmick, it's making me sick to my stomach. And I've been sick for a while too, I just couldn't say it. And now the lid is off. Had it. Many people are lured by prosperity preachers with promises that God will financially bless them if they give tithes or donations to their churches. But Benny Hinn says this is the wrong reason to give, which I totally agree with. 
Benny Hinn then went on to talk about the reason for his change of heart about the prosperity gospel. And according to him, it was because he didn't want to be rebuked by God for merchandising the gospel. You know why? I don't want to get to heaven and be rebuked. No, I think it's time we say it like it is. The gospel is not for sale. And the blessings of God are not for sale. And miracles are not for sale. And prosperity is not for sale. The Bible actually gives a warning about greedy false teachers in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1-3, through 3, stating, But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, in other words, greed, they will exploit you with deceptive words, like God will financially bless you for making tithes and donations to their churches. For a long time their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. Some people are questioning the sincerity of Benny Hinn's repentance. An online post by Christianity Today entitled, Benny Hinn Renounces His Selling of God's Blessings, Critics Want More, states, I think time will tell whether this is a minor correction, something for publicity, or the beginning of a new trajectory towards greater maturity, said Charles Self, a professor of church history at Assemblies of God Theological Seminary. I'm taking a wait-and-see perspective, because we've been down this road before. Hinn rejected the prosperity gospel for the first time in the late 1980s and again in the early 90s. And there were reports at that time he had really changed. He went on to preach prosperity again. If Benny Hinn's rejection of the prosperity gospel is genuine, it wouldn't be the first time someone in his family forsook prosperity theology. Benny Hinn's nephew, Costi Hinn, who was raised in Benny's ministry, left Benny's ministry a few years back and now works as a pastor in Redeemer Bible Church in Gilbert, Arizona. In an online post by Christianity Today entitled, Benny Hinn is my uncle but prosperity preaching isn't for me, Costi explained, Growing up in the Hinn family empire was like belonging to some hybrid of the royal family and the mafia. Our lifestyle was lavish, our loyalty was enforced, and our version of the gospel was big business. Though Jesus Christ was still a part of our gospel, he was more of a magic genie than the king of kings. Rubbing him the right way by giving money and having enough faith would unlock your spiritual inheritance. God's goal was not his glory, but our gain. His grace was not to set us free from sin, but to make us rich. The abundant life he offered wasn't eternal, it was now. We lived the prosperity gospel. The article continues on to explain that Costi became disillusioned by the prosperity gospel after various doubts about it began to surface. For example, there were unsuccessful attempts to heal people and Costi wondered why they spoke in tongues without an interpreter. After Costi graduated college, he met Christine, who would later become his wife. And she pointed out from the Bible that speaking in tongues was not for everyone. This contradicted what Costi was raised to believe. And ultimately, Costi learned that it was not God's purpose to make him happy, healthy, and wealthy. Instead, he saw that God wanted him to live for God, regardless of what he got from God. After those instances and more, Costi left Benny Hinn's ministry. Costi Hinn has since authored a book entitled God, Greed, and the Prosperity Gospel, How Truth Overwhelms a Life Built on Lies, which I'll leave a link to in the video description if you want to get a copy for yourself. Now, I must tell you I haven't read it yet, even though I am planning on reading it, and there may be some theology in there that I don't agree with, but that's not the point. The reason I want to read it is to gain a perspective about the prosperity gospel and lifestyle from someone who actually lived it. 
And this leads me to wonder if Costi's departure from Benny Hinn's ministry and the prosperity gospel prompted Benny Hinn's renunciation of it. In addition, Costi heard about Benny's recent renunciation of the prosperity gospel and responded to it, according to an online post, by the Christian Post entitled, Benny Hinn's nephew encouraged by uncle's rejection of the prosperity gospel calls for genuine repentance. There it says, Costi Hinn took to Twitter saying, I'm encouraged to see him express a refutation of prosperity theology and even admit to wrong teachings on that topic. Now, pray for undeniable lasting fruit that exemplifies genuine repentance. Truth and time go hand in hand. In a follow-up tweet, Costi Hinn wrote of Benny Hinn, He'll always be my uncle. I will always love him and pray for him until he or I are gone from this earth. Longtime proponent of the prosperity gospel, Benny Hinn, recently renounced prosperity theology, saying God's blessings, miracles, and prosperity are not for sale. Critics of Benny Hinn say they are not sure if his repentance is genuine, so they will wait and see. Costi Hinn, Benny's nephew, used to work and travel with Benny and his ministry, but left after becoming disillusioned. And he wrote a book about the twisted theology and lifestyle of prosperity preachers. And the Bible warns about greedy, false teachers as well. Please pray for Benny, that his repentance will be genuine and lasting, and that this will help others see the futility of the prosperity gospel. Click on the screen to check out some more of my videos. I have a lot of good Christian videos, which I'm sure you'll enjoy if you liked this one. Feel free to like and share this video. Thank you for watching, and God bless you.